and welcome Fort B. Uh, glad you're with us. Uh, sorry we couldn't be together. Uh, we're outside in the elements, right outside of where we normally skate at the palm tree out there. Uh, tonight we want to talk about Palm Sunday. Uh, wait, hang on one second. Uh, Tim, Tim. Uh, oh, you oh, got to you got to hold it up sorry. so I can so sorry. I can make it make it right. All right. Okay. Hey, let's try that one more time. Uh, tonight we're going to talk about Palm Sunday, which is coming up this Sunday. And uh, better yet, let me go inside and I'm going to show you a video. And uh, maybe I need to get a new prop guy. Hey, let's go. God's story, Palm Sunday. So part of God's story happened on a day we call Palm Sunday, and it begins like this. Remember how God sent his son Jesus to rescue us? Well, not everybody believed that Jesus was really God's son and the rescuer. But the ones who did believe in him did something pretty cool on Palm Sunday. It started just like any other day for Jesus. He was heading into Jerusalem with his disciples. But before they got there, Jesus did something surprising. He stopped and sent two of his disciples to go get a young donkey from a nearby village. He even told them exactly where the owner had last tied it up. They weren't sure why he needed the donkey, but they obeyed him. Kids, would you be willing to obey Jesus even if he asked you to do something you didn't understand? Anyway, when the disciples got back with the donkey, they threw their coats on its back like a saddle and Jesus climbed up. Pretty soon, the disciples saw why Jesus needed it. See, crowds of people came to the road and started laying coats and tree branches to make a path for Jesus. When this happened, many people recognized that Jesus was a king. Only kings came into a city like this. So Jesus rode the donkey like he was a one-man parade. And the crowds praised Jesus by yelling things like, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord, and peace in heaven and glory in the highest, because they believed Jesus was the rescuer. But remember how some people didn't believe Jesus was God's son? Well, they told Jesus to make everybody stop yelling. They didn't think Jesus deserved to be treated like a king. You know what Jesus said? He told them, if they keep quiet, the rocks will cry out. Well, the people who didn't believe in Jesus didn't like thinking about people or rocks praising him. And that made Jesus sad. He actually started crying. And not just crying, weeping. Here, the people were standing next to the rescuer they'd been wanting and waiting for their whole lives. And they were missing it. But even though Jesus cried, Palm Sunday isn't a sad story. Easter is all about Jesus' amazing rescue, and Palm Sunday is a reminder of just how special that rescue is, and how much Jesus loves everyone. And that's the story of Palm Sunday. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Jesus was traveling. He sent his disciples to get a donkey. People spread coats and branches on the road. They praised Jesus. Some people didn't recognize that he was the king. That made Jesus sad. He had come to rescue them. A few days later, he would show just how much he loves us. And that's a part of God's story. Well, this is the beginning of what they call the Holy Week. And we see that Jesus had already had some things in mind heading into Jerusalem with his disciples. They had stopped outside of the town, and he knew that there would be a donkey tied up at a owner's house just right outside the outskirts of town, and he told two of the disciples to go in and find it. And when they found it, they began to untie it, and just as Jesus predicted, if someone comes out and asks you, or if the owner comes out and asks you, what do you say? Well, they repeated what he told them, and he said, the Lord needs this. And so, yes, he took it on, and they brought it to him, and they threw their clothes, or, or some of their cloak, on top of the donkey so that he might ride it into town. And now as they go into town, the gathering of the number of followers, uh, the ones that were known of the followers of the way, uh, began to cheer. And that cheer is what we talked about uh, before, is blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Now they were celebrating what would be a king. Many of them were thinking a king because he was the lineage of David, King David, uh, that he would be a ruler over all. But Jesus kind of, this last week of his ministry, uh, is finalizing things and saying, uh, if you didn't get it by now, I've come to be the one that is the sacrifice, the one to take the place, to redeem, to rescue those who are lost. And in fact, all of us are lost. All of us, there's no way we can make it into heaven without Jesus. None of our efforts will ever be so good 
and outweigh our bad. And some people think, well, if I do more good than I do bad, then I'm going to make it, that Jesus will be pleased. And yet, we know later on that Jesus says he is the only way, the truth, and the life. And no one, no one gets to heaven. No one comes to the Father but through him. So we shall know the truth, and truth will set us free. And the freedom that we have is the freedom from the bondage of sin. Jesus died in our place. This day one happened on a Sunday leading up into that Holy Week. And uh, later on we see that they did the Lord's Supper together, the Last Supper is together. And he even turned that a little bit as the celebration of them being delivered, of the Israelites being delivered in the Old Testament over the Passover, one of the last plagues to uh, uh, be known uh, before they released uh, the Israelites. And uh, that Passover celebration was done quickly. And so this was right up until that time. So they're going into time, into this time of the Passover, the celebration of that, this Holy Week. But Jesus has a lot of couple of things going on right now. He says his disciples are following him. The, the leaders of the Sadducees and Pharisees are making known that they're getting a little disruption uh, from those that are following. They don't like that they're listening to uh, Jesus all the time. They don't like that they're not in control of that. And so the plotting that was known to come, the plotting of Jesus being betrayed by his own people, he came to his own, his own received him not, but yet he came for the whole world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This triumphal entry is one that we can celebrate this Sunday together. Uh, I've seen on Facebook a couple of you posts that you might be putting palm tree branches over your doorpost or in the window signifying that you are a follower of Christ. That he's come to celebrate the triumphal entry is the victory has already been won because we know the victor and the one who has set before us a plan that says, I came that you might have life, you might have it more abundantly. I came that you might have eternal life and be with me forever. For those of you that are seeking this Holy Week uh, to make something special out of it, begin this Sunday by saying, maybe there's something I can do that is for someone else. But also, may you remember, the whole reason for this season that we celebrate right now is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our victor. He's the one that makes us victorious. We're more than overcomers because of him, not anything that we do. Because apart from him, we can do nothing. But in everything, with prayer and supplication, make requests be known to God that the peace of God the peace of God in the midst of all this coronavirus, the peace of God surpasses all your understanding. It guards your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Focus on those things that are true, that are noble, that are pure, that are admirable. Paul challenges us in Philippians to do something. It says to take every thought captive in, in Corinthians, and then it says to focus on those things that are true, that are noble, that are pure, that are admirable. This week may be a week of celebration. May this Sunday begin this Palm Sunday of we celebrating what, uh, what has been known to us as He is a rescuer. He came to rescue us, to free us, to set us free. Let's celebrate that time. Hey, I look forward to next Friday night being with you. Uh, I hope uh, that you had a little bit of time to realize that everything, all of our distractions have been taken away. And all of a sudden you had this great opportunity to lean into, to understand God more. Spend time with Him. How does God speak to us? In His Word, through other people, um, through the Holy Spirit. And in fact, when He left, went away, He's told His disciples, I'm going to leave a comforter, uh, someone who's going to help you through this, the Holy Spirit. He's not lesser than God. He's not lesser than Jesus. He is a part of Spirit of the living God. And uh, we need to celebrate that. So let's pray together. Jesus, we thank you for being uh, the one who took our sin on, the burden of that sin, the price and the payment of that sin, and you died just for us. This week, as uh, we began to celebrate the death, your death, your burial, your resurrection, uh, may we come as one humble, as we walk in by faith and not by sight. May this be true in us as we walk that others might see the glory that, of you and the victory that's in your son Jesus' name. We celebrate that. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen.